Hey guys, Iron Sheik here with a crazy uh, demonstration. It's less of a magic trick and more of a, of a demonstration of uh, the sensitivity of my fingertips. I don't know if you guys could see my fingertips there, but uh, they are very sensitive. They actually might be the most sensitive fingertips in the entire world. They're so sensitive, in fact, that all they have to do is watch the intro to Marley and Me, and they already start crying out of control. This does not smell like an IHOP. <laughs> we got a little surprise first. Here we go. <laughs> I want you to walk right here, my dear. But what can you do with fingertips that are such sensitive and have such immense sensitivity, I hear you asking? Well, uh, don't get out of your seat because I'm gonna show you uh, in the uh, table below. Let's go there now. Whoa, so is that guy getting old yet? So all we need to demonstrate the sensitivity of my fingers, right? You could, you could even, I don't want to expose them too much to the artificial light. Oh, shit. Is the uh, Copog playing cards. You're going to see how they're going to be able to demonstrate the sensitivity of my fingers in a little bit. But first, let me just show you that the cards are, in fact, in a, in a random order. They're not, they're not in a, some sort of stack like you might see other magicians talk about. That's... That's not what I'm about. I'm about realism here. So actually, look, here's the first test right here. My, the sensitivity of my fingertips. All I can do is I could cut cards and I could tell you with precise measurement that this is exactly 14 cards. A exactly 14 cards. Here, look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh boy, I know that might've been a fluke. We'll do it again. Look, let's see. Uh, this time, uh, I'm going to say about 10, 10 cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. See, it's not just luck or magic. It's the, the my fingertips. I can't control a gift. Here, sir, do me a favor. You cut off less than half the card. So the spectator goes off and they cut off half. This one's a hard one. I'm going to say... Uh, 15, 15 cards, and of course the spectator counts them themselves. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You are 100% right all the time. So here we're going to demonstrate the ultimate test of my sensitivity and my fingertips. Uh, uh, so the spectator is going to call stop as you deal the cards. Stop. Stop right there, and of course... You show them this card right here. You don't want to peek at it at all. And you go, look, here we go. Oh, shit. Here we go. Oh, I'm getting out. Uh, this is definitely a black card. Oh, yeah. Okay. I can almost feel them. Yes, I feel the black ink. I, I feel three little humps. I also feel the smooth linen finish of these cards. Oh, boy, you should definitely get them. Uh, this is definitely the five of clubs. And, of course, the spectator is marveled by the fact that you were able to determine what card it is just based on the sensitivity of your fingertips. Oh, oh man. Whoa, so here we are back at the explanation part of this trick. Now, this is not an idea that's original to, to a good old piggy here. This is a hot one, a hot stack by Ed Marlowe. I know, I know I wasn't using a stack in the beginning, but I'm a dirty liar and that's what we do, we lie. Uh, so this is the stack, you ready? Any card. Ace of clubs, any card, two of clubs, any card, three of clubs, any card, four of, you see what I'm getting here? So you're gonna get the clubs and you're gonna put it every other card in order until the last one, which is, guess what? The king of clubs. This is now a 26 card stack and this is nothing. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is the stack you need on top of the deck. That's 26 cards as a stack, but here is the best part of the properties of the stack. The club's position is two times their numerical value. So in this case, the ace has a value of one and its position is, you got it, two. Oh man, you, you, you guys are, man, this is why you guys are sub to me because you guys recognize intelligence and I recognize your intelligence. So that means that the two is how far from the deck? Yeah, that's right, four. 
because all you're doing is multiplying it by two. So the sixth card of the deck is the three and, and so on until the 26th card of the deck, which is the king of clubs. So you really don't have to do any sort of memory work. All you need to know is that whatever the value of your card is, multiply it by two and that's the position of the card in the deck. So the four is gonna be eighth from the deck. So here's the thing, if they cut the cards and it's a six, all you have to do is multiply it by two and you know that there are 12 cards in this particular stack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I, I know what you're saying, but Piggy, why haven't you told us to subscribe yet? Well, uh, you should subscribe to the channel. Uh, you should check out pickcake.me, Hot Pickcake Card Academy. Um, and also if you feel like dropping some hot dollars on Piggy just for no other reason that you want to see him not uh, go under a bridge, there, there's a, a PayPal link below. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So here, here's what you do. So let's say we cut to a card that's not a club. In this case, it's a 10 of diamonds. We know that the next card is definitely going to be a club because that's the way the stack works. So in this case, it's going to be the five of clubs. So all we have to do is peek at this card and we know how many cards the spectator's holding or how many cards you're holding. In this case, if we peek, we're doing a heel peek, you're getting a pinky break, you're turning the deck over, and in that action, you see what happens? Oh yeah, oh yeah. The little card sticks out in the back there and you're able to get a little peek at the card. So one more time, all that's happening is I'm, I, I have a little pinky break. By just turning the deck over, that card is naturally gonna step and allow me to look at the index of that card, which is gonna be all I need to do. Because imagine if I cut the cards, all I have to do is say, oh, this looks just like, uh, I'm gonna say nine cards right here. And that's where I get my peek. So I'm just pointing at it and peeking at it over here. Man, isn't this intelligent? So in this case, we've peaked at a five, which tells us that the number of cards that the spectator's holding or you're holding has to be nine. Because again, five times two is 10. If the five isn't on the face, that means there aren't 10 cards here. That means there are only, that's right, nine cards. You guys catch on so quickly. So that means there are nine cards. So that's how you could adjust if you or the spectator does not cut to a club right off the bat. Now, of course, there's the possibility that the spectator might cut past your uh, block. But remember, you've told them from the beginning, cut less than uh, half the cards. Do me a favor, just cut any number, but make sure it's just less than half so we could run through this. Because imagine if they cut you know, there, you're not gonna really know that unless you really do have the sensitivity in your fingertips. So that's all you're doing in the first couple phases for as many times as you wanna prove to the spectator that you have the world's most sensitive fingertips. So that's all that's happening in this case. Now, when it comes to the last phase, all that you need to do in this case is deal the cards, telling the spectator that you're gonna deal the cards on the table and they're gonna call stop anytime they want. The reason you tell them this ahead of time is because while you're dealing the cards on the table, you are secretly counting them in your head. So in this case, sir, do me a favor. I'm gonna deal the cards on the table. Just call stop anytime you feel like it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Wherever it is that they call stop, Remember that number, because in this case, it's 12, which means that it's gonna be a six, because obviously six times two equals 12. So in this case, you're dividing. You're dividing whatever number by two. Now, here's the problem. If they happen to stop on an odd card, what do you do? Are you screwed? Are you not gonna be able to do the trick? Uh, no, you're still gonna be able to do the trick. Are you, are you following along? Are you? Okay, so let's say they happen to stop right there on the fifth card. We know that this is not gonna be a card that we know. However, we do know that this card is gonna be a club. So what card do we show them? We, we show them this card right over here. You, you see the, you, so let's say they, stay, they stop on the fifth card. So that's one, two, three, four, five. We know obviously that this is not gonna be a card that we know, so we say, okay, right there, do me a favor, sir, look at that card. And of course, because we know this is the fifth card, we know this is the sixth card, and therefore gonna be the three of clubs. So you're always gonna stop on a club, no matter what, because of your intelligence and your ability to count. So that's the uh, that's the trick. It's it goes. It's a Marlow stack. I'm gonna leave the uh, book where you could find that original stack in the description below, so you guys could get some of those hot hot ideas. This is just a little bit of a presentational ploy I had a long time ago, as well as uh, just a little bit of an ending to the original routine. Because if memory serves me correct, Marlow uh, just had this uh, stack for multiple tricks and these ideas were separate. So I'm like, hey, these ideas work very well together with the concept of uh, sensitivity in your fingertips. So why not combine these two and make it one powerhouse 
uh, sensitivity routine. Oh, oh boy. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, make sure to practice it before you show it to all your friends. I'm going to go figure out different ways to uh, watch Marley and me and not uh, ball out of control. Um, Shine, when I shine, when I shine, when I shine.